Once upon a time, there was a small town far from the city. In this town lived a witch whom everyone made fun of. This witch, named Fury, was so clumsy. One day, the witch Fury was preparing a potion to do her usual evil deeds. Bobby, get out of here! You will pour out this potion of unhappiness that I will deal out to the people. Witch Fury's spoiled dog was not standing still. He was running around. Bobby, enough is enough! Meanwhile, Witch Fury accidentally put too much sugar in the potion cauldron, but didn't realize it. She took the potion she filled in a small bottle and started casting spells. Let the laughter turn into tears, joys into troubles, and dreams into nightmares! <laughs> Just then, Spoiled Bobby got tangled in the witch's feet. The witch stumbled and tripped on her broom next to the table. And some of the potion in the bottle spilled onto the dog. Bobby didn't understand what happened first. Looked left and right, then turned into a giant candy. Seeing this, Fury looked at the potion bottle and her dog which had turned into a candy. The candy was bouncing around, and the witch was chasing after it anxiously. Bobby, do not go! I will fix this, wait! Ah, I said stop, wait! The candy bounced around, first popped out of the window, then fell into the pool below, and of course, melted in an instant. The witch fury looked sadly behind the melting candy. This incident spread from ear to ear among the townspeople. Those who were fed up with the witch's evils thought she deserved it. The witch living in the haunted mansion has finally been punished for her wickedness. Yeah, she won't be able to cast spells on us anymore. I think we should celebrate that. She's just a clumsy witch, and she lost her dog just because of that. From that day on, the townspeople celebrated the same day every year as Halloween. While the young girl named Millie was feeding street animals on the same day every year. <laughs> You're so playful, <laughs> little dog. Jump! Come on, jump! <laughs> a few years have passed. The Witch Fury began to devise a plan to punish those who made fun of her. That year, on Halloween, she disguised herself and wore a huge pumpkin headdress. In this way, she managed not to be recognized by anyone. I will punish all of you for making fun of me! She took the potion bottle she had prepared and went out of her mansion for the first time in years and started knocking on the doors one by one. No one recognized the witch fury. Trick or treat? Treat! When the witch heard the word candy, she sprayed the man with her potion and turned him into a giant candy. <laughs> now make fun of me! Then the witch went to the house next door. This time, a kid opened the door. Trick or treat? Treat! Here you go, treat! Witch Fury turned the kid into a candy right there. Meanwhile, Millie, who was out to feed the street animals, was very surprised to see huge candies bouncing around. Woof, woof, woof! What? What's going on here? Where are those candies coming from? Millie ran in the direction the candies were bouncing. And she saw that someone in a pumpkin costume 
was laughing at the candy that passed in front of her. Hey! Who are you? What are you doing to these people? Stop now! When the witch saw the young girl who was coming running to her, she started to run away quickly. They chased each other along the street. Finally, Millie caught this oddly disguised witch and took off her hood. She was very surprised to see that it was Witch Fury. Ah! Witch Fury! It's you! Why are you doing evil things to people again after years? You should stop now! The townspeople deserve it, Millie! While I'm sad to lose my dog, they're celebrating this day! Millie realized that the Witch Fury was very sorry for her dog and that she has actually been alone for years. I understand you, but the solution is not to hurt people. Kindness always wins. I have a great idea. Wait a minute. Millie called the little puppy next to her who was trying to play with the bouncing candies in the square and brought him to the witch. Here, look! How innocent is he? This beautiful creature may now want to live with you. Witch Fury was overjoyed when she saw the dog because he looked just like her old dog, Bobby. But this... He looks a lot like my dog! Oh, I can't believe it! Oh, he's so sweet! If you promise to stop doing evil to the townspeople, this puppy can live with you for a lifetime and be very happy. Woof, woof, woof! The witch's heart became softer as she loved the dog. The evil in her suddenly disappeared. I promise, this dog will now be my best friend. Thank you, young girl. The witch, with her newly adopted dog, turned all the candies that were bouncing on the street back to their old human form. She named her beloved dog Candy. Since then, Fury has gone out on the streets to do the street animals a favor every Halloween, just like Millie. And her dog Candy has never left her alone. Once upon a time, there lived a brother and sister named Hansel and Gretel. Their mother had passed away when they were babies. They lived with their dad in a hut in the forest. Their dad was trying to earn their living by working as a woodcutter and was looking after the kids at the same time. A couple of years passed and struggling to juggle work and two kids at the same time, their dad decided to get married again. The woodcutter's wife was from a wealthy family and she hated the fact that they were poor and she had to live in a small ruined hut deep into the forest. Plus, she did not like her stepchildren at all. On a cold winter night, as they were getting ready for bed, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother talking to their dad. How are you going to get through this winter? We don't have enough food. If you do not get rid of these kids, we will all starve to death. Their dad opposed furiously. No need to argue. I made up my mind. Tomorrow we'll take them to the woods and leave them there. Hearing all that, Gretel started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> her brother Hansel comforted her. Please don't worry, Gretel. Somehow we'll find our way back home. Later that night, Hansel snuck out and collected as many pebbles as he could in his pockets. In the morning, they all started to walk towards the forest. Their father told them that they were going for a family hike. 
As they were walking, without anyone noticing, Hansel dropped the pebbles to mark the way back. In the afternoon, their dad and stepmother lit a fire and told them that they will be back soon. They walked off and vanished in the woods. Of course, they did not come back. When the night fell, the horrible sounds of all the wild animals in the forest started to echo around them. Shivering with the horrifying sounds of the wolves, Hansel and Gretel did not leave the fireside until the moonrise. Then they started to follow the pebbles shining in the moonlight and walk towards home. Well done, Hansel. This was very clever of you. When the kids came back home, their dad was very happy and surprised at the same time. Their stepmother also acted as if she was happy, but deep inside, her decision was still the same. She was very upset that they were back. After three days, the stepmother tried to get rid of them again. This time at night, she locked Hansel and Gretel's door and did not allow Hansel to collect pebbles again. But Hansel was a clever boy. When they were walking to the forest in the morning, this time he dropped the breadcrumbs that he had put in his pocket the night before and again made a trail all the way back home. Around noon, their father and stepmother made up an excuse and went off, leaving them all alone in the forest again. Realising that they were not coming back, Hansel and Gretel wanted to start walking back home before it got dark. But this time, they could not find the trail they left because all the breadcrumbs were eaten by the birds. Gretel started crying. For the first time, Hansel also felt hopeless. This time the kids were really lost. With no food and scared to death, they wandered around the forest for three days. On the third day, they saw a bird, white as snow. The bird chirped songs with its beautiful voice for them. They forgot their hunger for a moment and started to follow the bird. The bird brought them in front of a funny looking house. This house had walls of bread, a roof made out of cake and windows of candy and was covered with colourful cream all around. Hansel and Gretel could not believe their eyes. The house looked incredibly delicious. The kids forgot all about how tired they were and started to run to the house. Just as they were both going to have a bite from the house, they heard a voice from inside. Oh! Now who is nibbling on my house? They looked around and they saw a cute and sweet old lady at the door. When they told her all about what had happened to them, she felt very bad for them and so she let them in. The inside of the house was very different from the outside. It was dark, scary and it didn't feel right. But because they were so tired and hungry, the kids did not care much. The old lady brought all kinds of food and desserts for them and the kids ate food that they hadn't had before. That night, they slept on the softest bed they had ever seen. When they woke up in the morning, the old lady wasn't there. They started to look around. At the end of the corridor, they saw a small door. When they opened the door, they found cases full of gold and treasure inside. They were very surprised, of course. Hansel wanted to get in and take a closer look. Right at that moment, they heard her voice again. And what do you think you are doing? When they turned around, the kids faced the witch standing right there in front of them. 
Apparently, the old lady was a witch leading the kids to a dungeon with a house covered with cake and candy. The kids tried to run away, but the door was locked. The witch pulled Hansel by the hair and locked him in a cage. Then she dragged Gretel to the kitchen. Your brother is too skinny. Cook some food for him and make him fat. When he's in good shape, he'll be a delicious meal for me. But don't you dare eat anything. All the food is only for him. Having no choice, Gretel did what she asked for. Fortunately, Hansel was a clever and wise boy. He decided to trick the evil-hearted witch. Every night when the witch was asleep, he was digging a hole in the ground of the cage. The witch was controlling Hansel every morning to see if he gained weight or not. But Hansel wasn't eating anything his sister cooked. Instead, he was burying them in the hole that he digged. In the meantime, the witch was telling Gretel to cook more. This went on for days until finally the witch had enough. Fat skinny! I don't care anymore! Today I will make Hansel pie! She turned to Gretel. Look in the oven to see if the dough is baked enough. Although she was in fear, Gretel was also a wise girl, just like her brother. She understood that the witch was going to push her in the oven. I can't get my head in there and see the dough, whined Gretel. The witch pushed her aside and stuck her head inside. Gretel gathered all her strength and pushed the old witch into the oven and closed the oven door. Gretel knew where the witch was hiding the keys. She ran straight away and saved Hansel from the cage. The flames from the oven covered the whole house. Hansel and Gretel ran away from the burning house into the woods. But they did not know where to go. A while later, they came across a river. A giant swan took them one by one to the other side of the river. The kids looked around and suddenly they realised where they were. They ran home as fast as they could. Seeing his kids, father was full of joy. With tears of joy, he explained to them how their stepmother had gone back to her parents' house soon after they had left them in the forest. And how sorry he was for all that he did and no matter how hard he had searched for them, they were nowhere to be found. The kids loved their father very much, so they forgave him. But another surprise was waiting for their father. They both reached their pockets and brought out gold and diamonds they had found in the witch's home. Their father could not believe his eyes. All the problems that their family had ever had went away and they lived happily ever after.